Please welcome student Anna Rosario to recite the Pledge of Allegiance. celebrate the dedication and service of Joseph Santoro to Brockwell Middle School and the entire Bethlehem Area School District community. There are a few distinguished guests that I'd like to acknowledge before we begin. I'd like to welcome Joseph's family, his wife Susan Santoro, Joseph's daughters Rebecca, Elizabeth, and Megan, and Joseph's son-in-law Michael, David, and Michael and all of their grandchildren. I'd also like to welcome Joseph's brother, Patrick. I'd also like to welcome the Bethlehem Mary School District School uh, Administration, Dr. Joseph Roy, Superintendent, and Dr. Jack Silva, Assistant Superintendent. I'd like to welcome Bethlehem Mary School District Board Members, Matt Malozzi, Dr. Sandra Messix, Carly Biggs Sabia, and Jim Santanasta. And lastly, the foundation for the Bethlehem Mary School District board members. Oh, I apologize. I skipped that. Those were the foundation. <laughs> I'd like to welcome our school board members for Bethlehem Mary School District, Winston Alozi and Dr. Dean Donner. It's an honor and a privilege to serve as principal of Brockwell Middle School. Brockwell has a rich history of 100 plus years of education and service to the Southside community. It's a place that's had a profound impact and means so much to so many students, staff, and leaders that have walked these halls. To provide you with a brief history of Brockle and its impact, I'd like to invite Dr. Jack Silva to speak. Not only has Dr. Jack Silva led Brockle as a district administrator, but he's walked the halls as Brockle during his middle school years. Please help me welcome Dr. Silva. Good morning, Bronco family. And if the Bronco family were ever assembled all in one place at one time, it would be right here, right now. So it's a pleasure to be with you this morning. Uh, I know Dr. Or Mr. Santoro always believed that it was crucial that the city had a strong and vibrant school right here in the heart of the South Side. And that South Bethlehem, or Bethlehem entirely, could not be great unless Brockwell was great. Now that belief goes back over a hundred years. There was a time where Bethlehem was divided in half. There used to be at the beginning of the 19th century, Bethlehem, which was on the north side of the Lehigh River, and South Bethlehem as its own city on the south side. That south side community, the, the, the city of South Bethlehem, had nearly 50% of its population as Eastern European and European immigrants who had their lives destiny tied up with the Bethlehem Steel Corporation. In 1910, to celebrate South Bethlehem's anniversary, the community decided what would be a better symbol of the strength and growth of South Bethlehem than to build a high school right in the middle of it. There were some obstacles to building a high school in South Bethlehem. In 1916, there was a smallpox outbreak. Sounds familiar, right? <laughs> Excuse me, World War I broke out. But with perseverance, just like they do here at Brockle, the new uh, South Bethlehem High School was dedicated in 1916 for 2,000 students on the magical 4.1 acres that is Brockle today. That high school uh, stayed as a high school for six years until a new high school was built on the north side known as Liberty High School. So Brockle's actually six years older than Liberty. 
But they changed the grade configuration of South Bethlehem High School at that point to serve grades 7 through 10 as South Bethlehem Junior High School. That school was known for an amazing vocational technical program financed nearly entirely by the Bethlehem Steel Corporation so that future employees would be, they'd be able to attract future employees. In 1938, a young man, 15 years old, Antonio Da Silva, who would eventually go on to be my dad, graduated from South Bethlehem Junior High School's vocational technical program. That was the last year he spent in public school. And in 1938, it was also a renaming of South Bethlehem Junior High School, Brockle Junior High School. Now you might say, who's Brockle? Well, L.J. Brockle was a long-serving Bethlehem com uh, commissioner and a long-serving member of the school board uh, as, and served as its treasurer for many years. So they dedicated, re renamed, at that time there was a naming ceremony as well, and they named that school on the corner of Broadhead and Packer Avenue, Brockle Junior High School. I had the privilege to attend Brockle Junior High School between 1976 and 79, the greatest four years in the history of Brockle. I'm partial. <laughs> Those were the years where there were killer school disco dances <laughs> with a light up floor borrowed from the local Knights of Columbus. We also were the undefeated uh, 1979 junior high school basketball champs, 12 and 0. And, uh, you know, as memorialized in the history of Bethlehem book on page 113. <laughs> <laughs> but I loved Brock, and I still do. Brockle changed the trajectory of my life in the best possible way, both in who I came to know, the education I received, and the commitment to the community that Brockle represents. Uh, in many ways, I admire Mr. Santoro because I only had one conversation with him. Uh, it was when I was registering my own son, Tony, to be a sixth grader here at Brockle, the year, first year it opened, 2009, this brand new building. And uh, I said, boy, what an, what an amazing community resource we have here. And I could just tell he was beaming with pride over what that meant to him. And without having to say too many sentences together, I knew we were on the same page as far as what the South Bethlehem community means and how Brockle is important not only to it, but the whole city. So over those years and the dedication, we find ourselves here recommitting um, in recognition of a true son of Brockle, a true son of our community. He hired a good number of you out there. He was colleagues with a good number of you out there. Uh, he uh, definitely uh, let it imprint, and uh, I view my job now as pretty much taking the torch that Joe Santoro lit and was running with. I grab it, and then I'm gonna hand, eventually hand it off to somebody else because this, this community really, really deserves the focus and the attention of everything that we can get. So it's with that level of appreciation and service that I'm honored to be speaking uh, to you today with that small history of Brockel. Equally important in that history of Brockel was some of the shenanigans pulled off by Winston Pelosi while he was a student here as well. Oh, oh, oh. Statue of limitations, is that all? <laughs> he now serves very well, proudly, as a school director of the Bethlehem Area School District uh, School Board. So it's my pleasure at this time to uh, announce it or to present a fellow graduate of Rockwell, Mr. Olds. Thank you, Dr. Silva. Uh, good, um, good morning, everybody. I am so honored to be here. I'm so honored to be here because I'm the oldest of five children, and all five of us went to Rockwell Middle School. Brockle holds a special place in my family's heart. Literally, my family. Xavier, wave your symbol, please. That's my son. Um, Brockle holds. Brockle holds a special place in my heart because my family is not from the original from the Lehigh Valley. And 20 years ago, um, next month, we moved here, 
And the first person we met was Clara Loria and Rita Ellen Lobos. And then we sat in the office with, um, oh Lord, rest in, rest in peace, with um, Sigley, Mrs. Sigley. And then every other day we checked in with Mrs. Spallone, or Miss Purple Lady, as people from my age would call her. Dr. Robledo was my guidance counselor. Dr. Feigley had my other siblings. Um, and I share all of this to say that Brockle runs in my blood. Um, I'm wearing this blazer, although it's hot, because to his children and his wife who are assembled here, this is my memory of Mr. Santoro. <laughs> Or wherever you were walking in that school, you never heard the man coming. You never heard the man coming. Still. But when you saw him, he greeted you with such a beautiful smile, with sparkling eyes. And I saw the one daughter with the dress. I saw, I saw, mm hmm, yes, looked right at him. And um, I just say that to say that those are the memories that we have of Mr. Santoro. He was a man of quiet strength, he was a man that was so personable. So my age group was one of the last set of kids that could come and freely visit. After that, they kind of said, you got to make a point, so this kid run up in here. <laughs> um, and when we would come through, one of the things I remember, and it's very fitting that this, this dedication is happening in front of the auditorium doors. Because outside of Ms. Ballone and uh, Mr. Uh, Santoro's office suite was the old auditorium. And when you walked through and you came in, and I usually would go in my doors because eighth grade went in where Mrs. Spallone was, and I would go in and I'd say hi to her, and she'd ask me about school, and then Mr. Santoro would come through, going either on his way in somewhere or out of somewhere, and ask me about school, and I just remember him being a very concerned, I guess you guys are no concerned dad. <laughs> um, and for so many myriads of students, I will speak on behalf of the great 8U class of 2001, yeah, I go back to the letter that makes you talk about it, <laughs> um, that we, we remember his quiet strength, we remember his smile, we remember the leadership that he, in, that he imbued upon his staff. And I said the names of these people when I started because these are people who welcomed my family and these are the people who to this day I keep in my heart. And that's the culture of care that Mr. Santoro put in this, even in this building, I know, I know the old building, I know the brown arches, okay? <laughs> Yes, terrazzo tile floors, the cafeteria that smelled like tater tots when there were no tater tots. <laughs> I saw the Lord show there, but that's a different story. <laughs> and it long story short, I'll keep it brief, but that is, the, that is the kindness that we remember. When I look and I see the faces of so many who worked with this man, um, and so many people who were impactful in my life and mean so much to me, we all share one thing. We share 114 West Packer Avenue, or whatever this is now, 114 West Street. As you can see, I have a partiality. Um, but in all of that, we remember how kind and how sweet. I'll give you one last thing. You walk into my mother's house, not anymore because she had her living room painted, but from 2001 up until about maybe two years ago, when you walked into her house, there was a wall of certificates from all of our schools. And the biggest of our certificates were certificates on goldenrod paper with blue bordering with Joseph G. Santoro signing the card. And that's because every one of us got um, good grades and perfect attendance and all that, but good. Mr. Santoro's name is all up in our house. So we're just grateful for that opportunity. We're grateful for that love. We're grateful that we have that sense of cohesion and that all came from being here. And I'm so glad that I can pass it on to my children and as a former staff member here that we continue to pass on that sense of family here every single day. Thank you. So we may wonder why Mr. Santoro was on every floor you were on. Um, and please note that was an important history of Brockwood Middle School, but the main takeaway was the undefeated basketball team yes. that Dr. Silva played on. <laughs> Everyone in the district is aware of it. <laughs> but to bring it down to uh, a more serious level, and I really appreciate those remarks, I'm honored today to uh, say a few words in the dedication port portion of this ceremony. I had the privilege of working with Joe for a few years when we were both assistant principals. Uh, Joe served 28 years, uh, retiring in 2010. I recall my few years where we overlapped as assistant principals, but I could never under I never knew where he stood on an issue. No, that's a joke. <laughs> 
I think I was the same way. Back at the time, uh, the, back at the time the district was considering building the new brothel, there was also consideration given to moving the school up on the mountaintop to land that the yeah, university was, would make available. And such a move would have provided more green space, uh, plenty of room to build out uh, the building and fields with additional acreage. However, the community, the school, the board, the district leaders, including Joe, realized the new brothel had to remain on the south side, had to remain, as Dr. Silva said, the heart of the south side community. With that vision in mind, Joe worked tirelessly and played a key role in designing, constructing, and opening a true jewel of a school, a place that shows every brothel child that they matter and that they belong here, that this community built this jewel here in this place for them, and it built it to be the heartbeat of the community. You can hear two words in my remarks when I think about Joe, heart and community. Principal Joe Santoro's leadership was the embodiment of those two words. Joe's heart was 110% behind his commitment to the brothel families and the brothel students. And Joe loved and valued the Southside community. Joe's heart and commitment to community make it fitting that we name the brothel auditorium in his honor today. The auditorium is the place where we come together from all backgrounds, for amazing student performances and for community events. Those performances show the heart of brothel students and in the process, they warm the heart of community members who see them. So with the words heart and community at the forefront, I am happy to dedicate this auditorium at Brothel Middle School, the anchor of the South Side, as the Joseph Santoro Auditorium. We have a drum roll, please.